Maggie. Today, I'm heading over to a secret location to get a bird's eye view of Singapore. Why are we going there? Well, because it's beautiful and also, I want to talk about a much bigger topic. Something that affects the air that we breathe, the climate that we live in and the future of our planet. Transportation. Every year, more than a quarter of greenhouse gases released worldwide is from transportation. This means that a big part of tackling the climate crisis actually involves solving greenhouse gas releases from transportation. So how do you guys usually travel around Singapore? Sometimes I take the bus, sometimes I take the MRT. I usually do bus lah. Oh. Public transport is literally the unsung hero of Singapore and when it works well, it's kind of invisible. Every day, millions of Singaporeans use this service. Commuting to work, going out on dates, grocery runs, almost everything you can think of. There are over 3.5 million trips made on public buses across Singapore on over 350 bus services daily, most of which look like this. But once in a while, you'll come across one with this symbol. Do you know what it is? Uh, is it plant-based bus? How about grass-type bus? These electric buses are our eco-friendly buses and currently we have over 400 of them operating on Singapore's roads. In 2022, Singapore announced that it will raise its national climate target to achieve net zero emission by 2050, which means a lot of emissions have to go. Remember what I said earlier about transportation being a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions? Well, in response to Singapore's net zero target, our Ministry of Transport had to put a strategy into plan. Replacing diesel fueled buses, electrifying half the fleet by 2030, expanding the MRT network to 360 kilometres by 2030, and expanding the cycling path network to 1,300 kilometres by 2030. By building more public infrastructures to encourage greener commutes by public transport, cycling or walking, Singapore is trying to reduce the number of cars on the road. Less cars means less greenhouse gases emitted. Behind me is Pasir Panjang Terminal, one of the seven terminals that are currently operating in Singapore. As an island nation, Singapore has little to no natural resources and is highly dependent on trade. Because of that, Singapore's port is one of the busiest and most important ports in the world, with a ship arriving and leaving every two minutes. As a global hub port, Singapore plays an active role in tackling climate change, and shipping is effectively the transportation of goods. So once again, transportation is playing a key role here. At this point, multiple changes have been put in place and will have to happen. If we look at the newly built Tuas port and my favourite, the Marina South Pier, you'll find that many technologies are being used to ensure that shipping is more sustainable than before. Using recyclable materials in building the foundation of Tuas port, the introduction of electric ferries, installing electric charging infrastructure for electric boats, solar and PV panels to create more renewable energy, trial and usage of alternative fuels, and using automation to make transportation of goods more efficient are some of the changes that we can see. Wow, look at all those planes! When you think of Singapore and transportation, you might think of air travel and of course, Changi Airport. Aviation is currently responsible for about 2% of global CO2 emissions and being a global air hub, Singapore can make a pretty significant difference. With about 93 airlines operating more than 6,700 flights a week at Changi, the future development of this airport will directly impact our carbon output and so far, things are looking up. Talking about looking up, if we look up above us on the roof of Changi Airport, solar panels are deployed here as well for greener energy. Other than the solar panels, we also see a very similar development direction for the airport in the future as compared to the marine port we were looking at earlier. Efficiency is the name of the game here. As the country develops, just like any projects, we always start with the essentials, then slowly build the project out with any additional needs and use cases. A lot of these project parts run the risk of being silos that don't work together as efficiently as needed. And with less efficiency comes bigger waste. For example, if an aircraft has to hold in the skies while waiting to land, it will burn more fuel. 
So one of the solutions Singapore has when it comes to aviation is to optimise the management of air traffic to reduce fuel burn. Reducing fuel burn for more than 6,700 flights a week will help the environment. On top of that, expanding the use of cleaner energy for vehicles like those also help to make this airport a greener one. With all this, Singapore is aiming to reduce domestic carbon emissions in the aviation space by 20% from 2019 levels in 2030 and also achieve net zero domestic and international aviation emissions by 2050. Of course, we might see these small changes and commitments to greening a process as being nothing much. What can riding an electric bus do? How does building a few solar panels help? How does saving a few more litres of fuel solve anything? If seen individually, nothing's gonna happen. But getting to net zero is about creating an integrated system. A green grid that provides green energy to power the green vehicles, people choosing to take public transport, in turn not producing as much greenhouse gases, your next online purchase reaching you via a more efficient system that creates less pollution. It's all these little changes that add up. So there you have it. The key to beating climate change isn't just in our hands. It's under our feet, on the roads we travel, and in the choices we make. Let's drive towards a future where our transportation doesn't just take us to places, it takes us to a better, more sustainable world. Just keep thinking!